Um, so, so these are the types of reactions we're, we're looking at studying. Um, and, and, and basically what we want to do is we want to design reactors and catalysts that can increase the rates of these reactions and increase the product selectivity of these reactions. Basically, how fast can we make this syngas and how pure can we make it? And those are the kinds of things that we're really trying to, to study and to and increase. Um, so next few slides will be just a, a quick overview of catalysis. Um, I'm sure, you know, when I was in high school, I had, if you said that word to me, I thought you were speaking a different language. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick background of, of, of what catalysis is. Now, um, you might have heard the term catalyst before. Um, basically what that is, is it's a, a reagent that you add with your reactants that speeds up the process and then it's reproduced at the end. So it, it, it's never really consumed, um, but it, it helps your reaction do what you want it to do. Um, so before I get into the metal catalysis, um, just some, some general um, ideas about chemistry here. Um, so let's say you have a bottle of molecule A2 and molecule B2. Um, so these guys are just kind of floating around in your bottle, and you want to get them to react. Basically what, what has to happen is they have to collide um, to form these, these BA type molecules. Um, now, the, the collision process we will call reaction coordinates. So basically, you can think of this as kind of like time for one reaction. Um, so here's kind of like an energy level of just your, your A2 and your B2. As they collide, they have to overcome what we call an activation barrier or a uh, threshold energy. And you produce your two AB, right? You know, you combine two of these guys and you get BA and AB, same thing. Um, so so, so the, the concept I want you to take from this slide as we move forward is that the rate of this reaction is going to be proportional to the exponential of the negative threshold energy over temperature. So, so the larger this threshold energy is, the slower the reaction is going to be. Um, and, and conversely, the, the lower this energy is, the smaller this, this delta E is, the faster the reaction. Um, this, this temperature here is, um, you know, the way, the way you can think about this is the higher the temperature is, the easier it is to overcome. It's these, these it, it, you know, you have your jar of, of molecules, you increase the temperature, they're going to start moving around a lot faster. They have more energy. So when they collide, there's a better probability that they have the energy it takes to overcome this barrier. Um, okay, so, so, so this is just kind of the case of, of a gas reaction. Um, so I'll, I'll keep this equation, or I'll, sh I'll show this equation on the next slide. Um, but, but just keep in mind that the larger this is, the slower the reaction. So Mike, yes. just a, a question. Is the objective of your research to develop catalysts to reduce, to compress yes. the delta epsilon so to drive the reaction to the right and higher the yield? Yes, exactly, exactly. So, so, I'll, so that's, so, so, Here's, here's a, a diagram of, of the catalysts we look at are solid metals. Um, so, so you can think of it as, as just a solid surface. And, and I mean, basically the advantages of, of using these solid metals are, there's two things to focus on. One is, is activity, which that's a term we use for how fast. Activity is how fast this reaction happens. The second is selectivity. Um, and, and I'll describe this more in the, in the next slide, but selectivity you can think of as are you making the product you want to make? If there's multiple products, multiple pathways for a reaction to go, how much of the desired product are we making? And that's selectivity. So that's really the goal of, of, of using these catalysts is to increase the rate and increase the purity of the product. Um, so, so basically what, what happens is these these molecules are in the gas, in the gas phase, and they, they come close to the surface, they bind with the surface, and then the reaction happens on the surface and they desorb. So, so 
Binding to the surface we call adsorption, leaving the surface we call desorption. Um, and now, the, I mean, the reason that the, the energetics are different on the surface, and, and we can improve these two things, are the geometry is improved. Um, you know, you can think about think about it like this: if, if the molecules are just flying around in the gas phase, the chances of them hitting each other are smaller compared if they're just on this table moving around, right? I mean, you you basically lose a, a third dimension there. So you're in two dimensions, and they're just moving on a on a plane, and much more likely they'll hit each other. And and then there's also um, electronic energy. Um, not to get too, into too many details, but this solid surface is is more or less an infinite sea of electrons that can facilitate these reactions. Well, um, now might be a good time to, if anyone has a question, yeah. don't feel bashful about asking because yeah, it would be better to get to the basic questions. concepts here. Please, anyone? No one? Okay, okay. there we go. Yes. So how, how does the reaction happen? They just meet up? Right. So yeah. So so I mean, you, how does it? So when when two things collide, basically, these molecules have um, shells of electrons. Um, a bond is basically a combination of two electrons. So when they collide, they essentially share electrons. Now, you know, the more chemistry you'll take, the more you'll learn about this in, in depth. But um, I think the best way to think about it is is if they collide, they can change shape, so to say. So, I mean, think about you have two balls of Play-Doh. Um, if you throw them at each other, you know, if you weakly throw them at each other, they'll hit each other and maybe fall apart. The harder you throw them at each other, the more likely they're going to stick together. Um, so, so basically, for, for things to react, they have to um, come into contact with each other. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyone else? Anything? Activation energy? Geometry? You can think of those things as a random event. They're flying all yes. around, right? Whether they react or not is a random event. What makes them react? They have to hit, and they have to be pointed the right way, too. Right. Like it has to be, you know, it might be a complex atom or a molecule, but only one of those atoms is the reaction site, and the other one's the same way. So if they hit back to back, they can't, they can't react. They have to be facing the way. Anything you can do to make it more likely to react is a good thing. And the metal does that. The metal actually will grab a hold of one of them and stand it up like this so that anything flying by is more likely to hit that active site. Just by random chance alone. Yeah, that's a great, great explanation. And when, and when these molecules collide, the AEA or BB, the bonds break there. Okay. And then they can combine the A with the B and so on. As you see, as Mike has put down, he has put down one B attached to the surface or one A. While initially it's A, A, B, B. So the first bond breaks and then they combine afterwards. Right. So, so, so you saw the, the energy before of the gas. Here's an example of how the surface can lower this, this energy. So you absorb, you've got your, your A star, which is that A bound to the surface, and you can see that the, the barrier to turn into B is much lower than it would be you know, in, in the gas. I mean, this is just a, a general example, but, but typically this is, you know, these, these metal catalysts we're looking at have these, these properties. These barriers are much, much lower. Um, so, so while it's more of a complex pro uh, process, you know, you, you need your absorption and your reaction and then your desorption, um, they're much, much faster. So, so that, that, that can ex explain the activity of why these metal catalysts work. Um, the selectivity part, so if you think about having a reaction molecule A goes to B and reaction molecule A goes to C. Now let's say if I made B, let's say I could sell it for a million dollars an ounce. If I made C, let's say I could sell it for one dollar an ounce. And A costs the same no matter what. I would much rather make more B, right? I mean, you know, you're going to make you're going to make more money, you're, and you're going to have less waste um, of your resources. So, if you remember this equation here, what we want to happen is we want this 
threshold energy, this activation energy of A goes to B, to be much, much lower than A goes to C. And tuning your metal or your metal properties can help you do this. Um, and I'll get into an example of that. So, so there's some disadvantages also. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Um, 